First book of Kings, chapter 1. I won't say 2 Samuel. Now King David was old and stricken in years. He's old. And they covered him with clothes, but he got no heat. Blood circulation is poor. Blood circulation is what keeps us warm. He's got the chills. He's getting old. <clears throat> there was no electric blankets back then. Wherefore his servants said unto him, Let there be sought for my lord the king, a young virgin, and let her stand before the king, and let her cherish, that's the only time that word shows up, him. <laughs> oh, I just cherish him. And there's so many questions that rise with this thing is David has so many wives, why couldn't you get the get them? Maybe they're in their old age. Get a young woman. She's young, warm blooded, hot. I don't mean hot as in, I mean her body temperature. He's cold. And let her lie in thy bosom, talking to the king, that my lord the king may get heat. Now, this is found in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 11. Solomon, David's son, <laughs> writes this in Ecclesiastes 4, 11. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? <laughs> that runs back to where we are now. I just wonder why didn't they get any of his other wives? Bathsheba is going to come in in the picture. Why not her? So, David's at his time. His blood is thinning out. He's got the chills. He's cold. So they sought for a fair damsel throughout all the coasts of Israel and found Abishag, Abishag, a Shumanite, and brought her to the king. And the damsel was very fair and cherished. That's the only time that word shows up. So there's two times the word cherish. It has to do with a woman, a girl, damsel sought for the king for he with no relations at all. People don't know what the words of the Bible mean. And here's an interesting word, and minister to him. Minister to him. What was her job is to keep him warm. Now that minister, let's look at Exodus 24, 13. 2413 because there are men who have this title and they don't deserve it and yet we're going to see the definition by the Bible Exodus 24 verse 13 Moses rose up and his minister Joshua well we know what Joshua done Joshua did everything he could to help Moses and here's this woman, her ministering job is to help David gain heat. It is for the help of others as Joshua helped Moses, as Abishag helped David. And there are men, especially in the pulpits, they're given the title minister. And they get people to take care of him. But in return to the flock to the church, he does nothing. And yet he's called the minister. That's a backwards use of the word. Because if you have somebody that's taking care of you and you're not helping them, you're not the minister, they are. So that was interesting. Minister, she's going to do whatever it takes to keep him warm except for any sexual. If he's Get right up close to him, rub up against him with more blankets, whatever it takes. That's his job. Keep him warm. And minister to him. But the king knew her not. That's interesting because you're going to see that phrase we saw in Bible study today with Joseph. 
Joseph knew her not until after Jesus was born. There's no relation. Okay. That was a little side note. Back to the kingdom. Back to the troubles. Back. And Adonijah, Adonijah, best again, the son of Haggadah, exalted himself, lifted himself up, praised himself, pride. He's going to fall. Saying, I will be king. My father's stuck in bed. He's old. He's senile. And this is the time. And he prepared him chariots and horsemen, a military. This is what happens down South America. There's one guy, he gets militants, he gets an army, he gets a bunch of missionaries, missionaries, excuse me, and he tries to exalt the government by his power. And this is what's happening right now in Israel. This is David's son. Again. <laughs> Absalom did it. <laughs> Look at the troubles David's going through. Not easy to be in political power. You got the president of the United States. Everybody's trying to overthrow him. Any of them. Somebody's trying to get him out of office and get themselves into office. It happens worldwide with nation and leadership. Somebody wants your throne. Somebody wants your seat. Adijah wants to see. I will be king, and he prepared, excuse me, he prepared him chariots and horsemen, he's going to have an army, and 50 men to run before him. So he's got at least 50 people. And his father had not displeased him at any time in saying, what hast thou done so? David has not said, David doesn't say a word at all to any of his children. Amon has a problem with his sister, and David never steps up and never does anything. David finds out what happens to Adnan, and he doesn't say anything still. What hast thou done so? And he also was very goodly man. This is Adjon. And his mother bare him after Absalom. So what? Wait a minute. Didn't David really love Absalom? Wasn't it David's desire against Absalom? Or do we have a Jacob and Rachel here? Old Joseph, he's the son of my old age. He's the best son. He gets the coat. It seems to be a Jewish trait throughout the Bible. I mean, he was born of this woman. And looks like the fact is maybe David had more to her children. So the one we're talking about now, Adjah, whatever, however he's Abijah, he's brother to Absalom. Absalom's now dead. And he conferred, that's the first time that word shows up, with Joab, the son of Zeruiah. Now Joab had been kicked out. Joab had murdered the one that David put in replace. Joab ends back up in the government. And this coup against David in the throne of Adijah, David's son, Joab is now taking part of it. This is the last straw that breaks the camel back for Joab. But David doesn't do anything. He'll have Solomon do it. Joab is now part of the coup to go against David. Joab has not done that so far. I mean, yeah, he's a murderer, but he stood by David's side. Now he's going against David. This is the son. And we will read later on that Adonijah has that right to the throne after the death of his brothers, whatever wives they were. He is next to that throne by birthright. But God said, no, it's Solomon. So Joab, with the birthright, joins in with Abiathar, the priest. He's got the priest working with him that worked with David. And Ephalon Adonijah helped him. 
He's got the military and he's got the church. The same thing happens down in South America. You get the church and you get a military and you overthrow the government. And that lasts for a while to somebody else. Absalom did that. Overthrow David. It's happening again. Notice how David never tried to overthrow Saul. He just went with the flow and let God take care of it. But Zadok the priest, that's the high priest, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and Nathan the prophet, we've read about him in 24, and Shimei, and Rei, and the mighty men which belonged to David were not with Adonijah. Or Adonijah, I can't say Adonijah. his name. Adonijah. So, you've got a split. You've got another civil war in the kingdom of David. You've got these men versus these men. It's a civil war. It's brother against brother. Against their father. And Adonijah slew sheep and oxen and fat cattle by the stone of Zolot which is by En Rogo. That's a that's a name place in the Bible you see often. And called all his brethren, the king's sons. That's what Absalom did, and slayed. Uh, what did I say now? Amen. And all the men of Judah, the king's sir. So. I'm going to throw this royal party. I'm going to throw this royal feast. I'm going to invite all the king's sons. I'm going to invite all the men. I'm going to invite all the nation of Israel. I'm the king. You have not got David's permission. The high priest is not involved. The prophets of your father are not involved. The mighty men of your father are not involved. There are people who should be there missing. Verse 10. But Nathan the prophet, we saw in verse 24, and Benaiah the, and the mighty man, and Solomon his brother, he called not. There was a selective guest list. And the ones that would go against his plans, he didn't invite. They would be the ones who stand up and say, hey, you're wrong. Verse 11. Wherefore Nathan spanked unto Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon. Now Solomon is the one that God said that's going to be the throne. That's the one that's going to take over your throne, David. Solomon. So now Adonijah is falling against God, against his father. Nathan, the man of God, steps in, goes to Bathsheba, who is the mother of Solomon. Because if this political plot happens, and succeeds, both Bathsheba and Solomon would be killed as rebellion against the government. Whereas there is no rebellion, but on the side of Adonijah. The first thing he would do was kill Bathsheba and Solomon because they stand in the way of his political aim where God has already spoken. And by what we read now by Nathan, it's already been declared through the kingdom by David's mouth that God has established Solomon. Wherefore Nathan spake to Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, say, Hast thou not heard that Adonijah, the son of Haggith, that's the, that's the mother, doth reign? Doth reign. You got a dual reign. Like Absalom. And David our Lord knoweth it not. So when we read back over here. And it said. His father did not displease him at any time. He didn't know. He had no idea. He could not speak. According to Nathan. David does not know it. Now therefore come let me. I pray thee give thee counsel. Let me talk to you. Let me explain to you. That thou mayest save thy own life 
and the life of thy son Solomon. I've already spoken about that. Go and get thee in, go get thee unto King David and say unto him. Now, where is this different from what we've seen before? Joab sending a woman pretending to be someone who she's not. This is the truth. He goes up to Bathsheba and says, listen, you and your son, you're in trouble right now. You have got a death warrant on you two right now. You need to go to the king, your husband, his father. And there's no dressing up. There's no pretending. And what Nathan is doing, he's not giving her a script. He's just revealing the facts. Maybe she don't know all the story. Or reminding her. But what he, what Nathan wants to do is Bathsheba, when you go to the king, I want you to be as honest as possible to the king. So this is not a performance. This is just, we're going to go to the king. And while you're talking to the king, I'm going to come in. And I'm going to back up what you say, which is all the truth. And what Nathan is doing, he's doing what is established in the law. Out of the mouth of two or three. It shall be established. And we've already learned from the Bible. David knows the Bible. And when David would hear the second word. Out of somebody else. That somebody is doing something. That is not allowed. Two people have spoken to that testimony. David now will be. Have to do something. And this is about the son that's taken over the, the government. So Nathan's not going to go in there by himself. That's one witness. Can't do nothing. Give thee counsel that thou mayest save thine own life and the life of thy son Solomon. Go and get thee in unto the king David and say unto him, Does, uh, does not thou know that? Does not thou, my lord, O king, that's her husband, do reverence him, swear unto thy handmaid, saying, Now this is what David told her, told Nathan, about what God said about Solomon. Assuredly. Solomon thy son shall reign after me. He shall sit on my throne. Didn't you tell us that Solomon. That's the one. Why then does Adonijah reign? Now that last part is going to be. Wait what? Alright yeah. Solomon yeah. Yes dear. Our son Solomon yeah. What do you mean someone else is reigning? That's going to spark his interest. That's going to bring the heat back in his body. He's going to prop himself up as much as he can. What's going on here? Behold, while thou yet talkest there with the king, I also will come in after thee and confirm thy words. Two witnesses. And Bathsheba went in unto the king into the chamber. And the king was very old. I don't know why they keep saying it. Very, verse 1, he was old. Now he's very old. So there's been some time between 4 and 5. And Abishai, the Shunammite, ministered unto the king. There's that minister. Her job is keeping him warm. Can you imagine what Bathsheba feels? There's her husband with another woman again. I, I, I don't know. I Think that because I would think that she would say, Hey, lady, get out, and I belong there. That's my husband, you know. That's what I think. And Bathsheba bowed and did obedience unto the king, he's the king. And the king said, What word is thou? And she said unto him, My lord, small l, he's not God, thou swearest by the Lord Jehovah. You swore by God, hon, king, David, thy God, unto thy handmaid, his wife, saying, Assuredly Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne. And David's like, yeah, okay, true. What's the problem? And now behold, Adonijah reigneth. Okay, now there's interest. Now there's a coup in the kingdom. And now, my lord, the king, thou knowest it not. You have no idea what's going on outside these gates, outside these walls. He has slain oxen, 
and fat cattle and sheep in abundance and has called all the sons of the king. Uh, there are people out there who say all means all that all means all in the Bible. Did they call all the king's sons? No. Because Solomon is somewhere else right now. I would suppose that Nathan and Bathsheba's got him maybe hidden. Until we can get the matters still. We didn't call all the sons. So, and Abiathar, the priest, that's going to ring us in ears. That guy was working with David. Now he's working against David. And Joab, the captain of the host, again, working with David. Now he's going against David. Now this is going to anger David because these are his right-hand men. They are going against me. But Solomon, thy servant, has he not called? He called all the sons, but your son, Solomon. And thou, my lord, O king, the eyes of all Israel are upon thee, that thou shouldst tell them who shall sit on the throne of my lord, the king after. All right, David. Is it Solomon or is it, is it Elijah? Who is it? You got to tell us right now. Israel needs to know. Because we don't know how much you got. We have no idea. Otherwise, it shall come to pass when my, when my Lord the King shall sleep with his fathers. So even for an Old Testament saint, it's described as sleep. He would go up in Abraham's bosom and rest. That I and my son Solomon shall be counted offenders. That's the only place that shows up. If you die right now, king, me and Solomon, we are the rebellious. We are the rebellion, and we're going to die. Now, if you said God said Solomon, you got to step in. And lo, while she talked with the king, Nathan the prophet also came in. And he told her he was going to. There's no setup. There's no lies. It's all the truth. And they told the king, saying, Behold, Nathan the prophet. And when he was come in before the king, he bowed himself before the king with his face to the ground. And Nathan said, My lord, O king, hast thou said, Adonijah shall reign after me? He shall sit upon my throne? Now you really got David's attention. Here comes David's seer, his prophet. He just was there buying the land that the temple is going to be built on. The angel of the Lord went away because of the words of Nathan spoken by God. He's got the attention. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. For he has gone down this day and has slain oxen and fat cattle. And sheep in abundance. Has there been any lies or any fainting? No. And has called all the king's sons. All but Solomon. You gotta be careful when you say all is all but all is all. When the king threw all the men that went against Daniel into the lion's den. The Bible says it, it, they break all their bones. You mean the, the three little bones in the ear too? They were broken? All? This king's son. It can't be all. Because Solomon wasn't. Solomon is his king's son. Bathsheba. And the captains of the host. That's the military. And by far the priest. That's the priest. And behold they eat and drink before him. Say God save king Elijah. Uh-oh. Nathan put a little extra in there. David, you have been dethroned by power. Bathsheba mentioned God as you said God said Solomon. Nathan came in and said, God, God save Adonijah. We got a conflict with God here. 
and not with God, but what's going on with his kingdom? But me, even me, thy servant, and Zadok the priest, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and thy servant Solomon, has he not called? You know what's going on right now? The party is happening right now when they're in the throne room of David. There is David. I don't know if he's on the throne instead of chamber. But there he is. There's these people before David. And he's like, we're here. And they're over there right now feasting as a king royalty. Is this thing done by my lord the king? Did you do this? And thou hast not showed it unto thy servant. Who shall sit on the throne of my Lord, the king, after him? Now we're going to stop right there because David's going to speak. But we're going to leave right now. David's in the throne room he, or, or somewhere. David is the throne. He's the king. And he's just learned that there's a coup again, his own children. Boy, if that don't bring gray hairs, here it is again. David's in trouble. 